Now this is a Subaru STI six-speed transmission. Now I know what you're thinking. Not another transmission swap, like just drive the car already. Uh, and, and not quite. But realistically, uh, this engine, especially now where it's, where it's so heavily ported, I'm going to be north of 400 horsepower, uh, probably north of 400 foot-pounds of torque. Um, and the five speed, even though I have the STI RA five speed, it might not be up to the task. What I don't want to happen is I break that five speed right out of the gate or my first track day, and then I have to spend a fair amount of time getting all the parts and fitting a six speed and losing a summer. I'm tired of losing a summer. I want this car on track multiple times this year, and I want to start enjoying it. So a six speed is inevitable for me. Now, whether or not this goes in this summer, that's, I'm not decided on that yet. But if it does go in this summer, it's gonna be an afternoon install because I've already made the frame modifications, I already have the hub upgrades, and I already have the axles. So it's a simple, just unbolt one, bolt the new parts in, done. So while the engine is out, now's the time to make the frame upgrades. The six speed has this rather large sump, which happens to land right in the middle of that X frame. Um, I've already fitted my lower profile uh, transmission mount. This is the factory one, the five speed and six speeds appear to be the, the same. The five speed low profile one that I made uh, bolts up to here just fine. So I'm gonna cut out just enough of that X to clear this. I'm gonna install it in the same location um, uh, and the backside, hold the front roughly level uh, with the frame. And then I'll build whatever tube structure I have to, to fill that in. I have some pictures for reference of how other guys have done it. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just gonna be much easier and better to do it now where the fuel is sealed off, the engine's out of the way, the electrical can be pushed out of the way, um, and I'm not trying to do it in a rush. So it's not gonna affect the uh, five speed at all, so I can still put the five speed in there, but whenever I do decide to run this, um, whether it's right away or mid-season after breakage, it'll just fit right in there, no problem. So I couldn't help myself. I wanted to just piece together the engine on the engine stand. You don't get a good picture of it in the car. It's not like popping a hood and, and seeing it on display like you would now. It's kind of a half look from behind with tubing and stuff in the way and heat shields. So here is my setup. Um, most of it's the same as before. So one change that I made that is currently the only thing keeping me from installing the engine is I changed to this uh, full function engineering trigger wheel. 
Now, when I had first got the car running, I, you know, I built this whole wiring harness. Um, Brian from Vex Performance in Calgary uh, wrote me a really long email uh, just giving me some pointers. And one thing he noticed with rotaries and with the AEM is at high RPM you can get some interference on the trigger wheel setup. So he suggested I should really use shielded wire so that there is no interference in that signal. And um, if possible, switch to this uh, trigger wheel. Now, switching to that trigger wheel wasn't really an option with the engine in the car. Um, unless I took the whole firewall off the back or off in front of it. So I am going to do it now. And I just got some shielded wire from Holly. I'm sure there's cheaper sources, but I think this is like 25 bucks US for 25 feet, uh, which should be enough for me to route uh, to the front, to the ECU, and then I'll um, cut what's left and I'll route and leave a loop so that the wires are already run for an ethanol content uh, sensor that I will add later. Um, but we won't get into that now. So I got to quickly, uh, I already got the seat pulled and the, uh, my new carbon fiber panel pulled, um, that little hatch that I put on the firewalls handy cause I can leave the driver's seat in and I can access all the wiring. So now I've got to feed this through there and get that all loomed up and then I can install the engine. Um, the frame mods are all done for the six speed, which I didn't test fit, fit with the five speed, so I think the five, st five speed will still fit. Um, and then I've got my panel mounted right here. And I got some, um, I, I bolted on my heat shield so that I knew where roughly where the top of the turbo was. And I put this um, um, heat insulation sticky stuff there. Uh, like it's like a tape. Probably have the. Yeah, it's the Coolit Thermotec, 2000 degrees, radiant heat. Um, it shouldn't see that because the turbo is ceramic coated. One eternity later. Oh, there we go. The engine is in. Uh, that took um, a lot more work than I expected. When I pulled the engine out, I was able to keep the wing support and this, I guess, strut tower bar in. Uh, and I was pretty impressed that I was able to not have to take that out because it's kind of a pain um, because you know, like your inner fender wells bolt to it and whatnot. But there was just no having it. I tried it a few different positions and I, I'm not sure how I managed to get it out the first time, but there was just no going in and um, it was just getting stupid. It's like, well, why don't I just pull this off? Because I'm going to end up busting something off and, and, you know, a fitting or something and, and uh, just get angry. So uh, I took that off and... Now I'm really regretting not taking it off to begin with. Um, just for everything, for fitting the six speed, for doing climbing in and out, for getting this panel, or doing this panel. Um, I really wish I had taken it off in the beginning, but that's done. I, I managed to finally get it in there. Um, the FD motor does just mount in the back. So the engine does want to just tip on its mount. So what I, you might see this little block of wood I got in here. I've also got a rubber spacer right at the crank pulley. Um, not the, the weight is on the uh, wooden block, the tipping forward weight. The rubber spacer at the crank is that if the block managed to slip out, the engine wouldn't dive down and then hit the firewall with the crank. It would literally move a sixteenth of an inch and bring up, so it, it shouldn't affect the crank. Um, next up is to... Um, I'm just hooking up these really pain in the ass lines in the front, the water lines, the oil lines in the front, um, and then it's transmission stuff. But I'm gonna put that in an another video. I am gonna convert the six speed to uh, two wheel drive, um, front wheel drive for any Subaru guys, uh, rear wheel drive in this application. There's some other things that might have to be done um, to fit the six speed. So right now the engine is done, I can fire up the engine. So as soon as it's converted to two wheel drive, I'll bolt it up, fire up the engine and make sure we got compression, make sure everything's good with the engine. And then I can spend the rest of the winter fiddling with six speed stuff. Uh, at any point, if I get called away for work and all of a sudden it's springtime, I can throw the five speed in there and um, start breaking in the motor. The six speed stuff, we're still gonna have to, I'm still gonna have to 
modify or completely build a new shifter setup uh, or linkage on the backside. Uh, the axles are, are not going to, uh, to cut it. Uh, they, could, they could work, but right now they're the weak point more so than the five speed. So before I bother even putting the six speed in, I wanna run uh, the six speed axles. But I'll get into all that stuff with the six speed stuff because I gotta upgrade hubs and blah, blah, blah. And then might, might as well upgrade brakes and it just doesn't end with this car. Um, but the priority now is, is to get a transmission bolted to this, turn the car around, bolt an exhaust on and uh, let's make sure that uh, she wraps and uh, she has compression. And then I'll feel a whole lot better about finishing the little things knowing that the engine is probably maybe good. Uh, so thanks for watching. I know this video was a little all over the place, um, just kind of how I've been working on this car, just all over the place, little things to do. Uh, but now it's kind of more linear to the finish. So thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.